Inside here is my new camera. Which one is it gonna be? The X Pro 3 or the X100V? Let's find out. Hey, what is going on guys? It's Leo back here for yet another video. And today we're gonna be going over the outcome of last week's video. For those that haven't seen that video, I'm gonna link it up here. Everyone who did see the video and gave me their feedback via the comments and also via my Instagram, very much appreciate it. All your feedback went into the decision of what camera this one is. I really do appreciate it how it, was never, it wasn't just a straight answer. Some Everyone was given their two cents, everyone was given their opinions on why you should do this and this and this, which is absolutely great. You guys need to start opening your YouTube accounts because very insightful people out there, seriously, very insightful people. As you know, I'm a firm believer of the used market. I'm a firm believer of using older cameras because I do feel, honestly, they do keep up with today's cameras. But having said that, I've never shied away and I've said it on a few occasions that if an opportunity comes along where you can upgrade to the latest and greatest, you need to take the opportunity. So without further ado, we've been waiting long enough. Let's do the unboxing of this camera together and uh, find out what we got. Let's jump to it now. So were you guys surprised that I picked up the X100V or were you thinking, no, that was definitely the camera he was uh, gonna get? So let me explain how the conclusion came to picking up an X100V. For those that watched the last video, you already know that I asked for people's suggestions in the comments or via Instagram messages, etc., etc. And the large majority of people were actually pointing to the X100V. After I tallied them up, I think it was a good 60 to 70% of people wanted me to pick up the X100V. And the odd few asked me to pick up the X100F and the Pro 2 together, which was quite funny. At the end of the day, the decision was mine whether I would follow up on the comments and pick up the X100V or make my own decision and pick up the X Pro 3. And let me tell you why I came to the conclusion of wanting the X100V in the end. Some of the comments I've received on my channel or whether it be inbox messages on my Instagram page definitely gave me really good pros and cons why I should pick up one over the other. And I really enjoyed reading them and they were really insightful. It definitely helped me to make my decision. But why? Why did I pick up the X100V in the end of the day? So when the Fuji X Pro 3 was announced, I instantly fell in love. The main reason I instantly fell in love was purely because I could shoot from the hip for street photography. Everyone was complaining about the gimmick of it having a little uh, screen and then you open it and the only way you can actually see the full screen is actually opening it down. That was never an issue for me because I try not to chimp when I take photos. So if anything, that was a pro. And then they released the X100V. And as you can see, this has a articulating screen where you can shoot from the hip. But I was still in um and ah and about which one I preferred the most. Was it the pocketable X100V or was it the more complete X Pro 3? And that's when obviously when I asked you guys for your opinion, I feel that the reason I decided to go for the X100V was it came down to a simple factor. When I was going out shooting street photography, what was the camera I picked up first? Seven out of 10 times, the camera I would go for first would be the X100S. Purely because of its form factor, there's no stress on lens changing, there's pick it up, you just start shooting and enjoying with it. Because it's such a small camera, it draws a lot less attention to yourself. And as you can see, I went for the black now because I think that's even better in terms of drawing less attention to yourself. And yeah, so seven times out of 10, I would pick up the X100S. Not that I wouldn't use the X Pro 1 for street photography. It's just that just form factor and usability. This one was the first one I grabbed. At the end of the day, that's what it came down to. 95% of my photos are street photography. When I do the odd jobs here and there for portraiture or 
just general use, I felt that the X-Pro1 was plenty capable. The type of paid jobs I do, it's more of a controlled environment, so I have time to set my exposure, set my focus, and take the photo. The results on the X-Pro1 are amazing. Everyone always talks about the, the look that the X-Pro1 creates, and like I've always said to people, it's personal preferences down to the individual, but I definitely agree it has a particular look, and that's something that the newer Fuji cameras could never emulate. It's hard to explain until you've used an X-Pro1 and you've used X-T2 and X-Pro2 or any of the newer Fuji cameras. And then it came to another decision. What was I more sad about letting go? And it came again to the X-Pro1. I was more sad letting go of that camera than letting go of the X100S. I love the X100S. It was my first ever Fuji camera and first camera into the system. It was a lot more easier for me to say, I'm retiring you, I'm picking up this, than vice versa with the X-Pro1 and the X-Pro3. I'm happy with the decision that we came to. I'm happy that I picked up the X100V and I'm happy that the majority of the comments did sway me towards the X100V as well because if it wasn't for your in the insight from you guys, I probably wouldn't have come to this conclusion. So again, thank you very much. I look forward to shooting street photography with this and bringing you guys along with the GoPro on my chest and doing some POV street photography shooting. So the X100V will be my camera of choice for street photography going forward. So I hope you guys enjoy the videos that are gonna come your way. If you want a full on review of this camera, I will be shooting with it as much as I can so I can give you the honest opinion of this camera. No camera's perfect. I'm gonna give you all the details there is to know about this camera. So whether you wanna pick one up or not, I'll leave that up to you. If anyone is still on the borders of not wanting to pay the money for this camera, X100S is an amazing camera and it's a very capable camera that you can easily pick up and just enjoy shooting with. I did for the last three years. I would have been happy keeping this camera and using the X-Pro1 for years to come. But again, like I said in the previous video, an opportunity came up for me to either upgrade one or the other, and that's why I'm holding this camera today. If it wasn't for that opportunity, I wouldn't be holding either of these cameras. So guys, I know it was a, just a quick unboxing and a reveal, but thank you very much for watching this video. I always appreciate you guys tuning in every week. If you feel that anyone else would enjoy this video, please consider sharing it to them. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel because I release videos every week about photography and videography. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell because everyone who already has knows it's the coolest thing to do. And apart from that, that's all I got for you for today. So remember, keep creating, keep doing what you love, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. So for those who stayed to the end, thank you very much for staying to the end. You guys are epic, um, and I've got a little story for you. So I went out to shoot and shoot photography last week with my X100S, and I had my SD card in there. And I, was take, I took out my SD card and started editing some photos, not knowing that I put the SD card in the top pocket once I got off the train. When you get home, what do you do? You take off your outside clothes, chuck them into the, the dirty wash, and you get a shower. Well, I did that. Not knowing that this was still inside my pocket, I put wash on, forget about the entire process. Come later on that day, I'm thinking, okay, I wanna go out and shoot some street photography. I'll pick up, I need to get the SD card because it's not in my camera. Where's the SD card? I have no idea where it is. I washed my SD card in a spin cycle in my washing machine and yeah, it came out smelling great, it came out looking great, it was nice and clean. But the biggest surprise to me that none of my data was corrupted. Everything is still on here and I extracted all my photos. I'm not sure how long it will last. I'm pretty sure it's probably going to rust and just stop working. So I am retiring this SD card. But what's crazy to me is that I've dropped an SD card on the floor and it's destroyed all my data. I pulled an SD card out early and it's corrupted all my data. But if you put an SD card in a washing machine, put it on a full spin cycle for about three hours, you know it's gonna be fine. But don't try that obviously, it's not a good idea. I would never do that ever again. But yeah, that's a quick little story for you, SD cards. So this Sanders 32 megabyte SD card is the strongest thing alive. So I'm gonna go out now and shoot this camera and enjoy the day. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the day. Again, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. See you later. Peace.